Good evening, my friends. How would you rate your day so far? Just these last 24 hours from one to 10. How would you rate your day from one to 10? Just, just drop it down below. I would love to see. I'd love to see. And, and here's what I'd say. Me. By the way, my name is Sherry Holland, back in case this is the first time we're meeting. But most of you guys, we've been playing together for a little while now. But from 1 to 10, I would probably say today I'm sitting somewhere around like an 18,000%, I feel. <laughs> That's right. That's 18,000%. Today's been a juicy, juicy day. And, and what we're on today is I think we're on day number. We are on... Let's not even just say days. Let's just say chapters to keep it simple. Are you guys okay? We just, hello, Brian. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Christy. One to 10. Where are you guys at? I'm just curious. But we're on chapter number three, part one. So what we're going to be doing, just to keep it super simple, everybody, is as we're going along this journey, studying this personal development, just leveling ourselves and our finances and our relationships and our juiciness, our happiness, just our everything, becoming a better person. But by the way, how many of you guys on here would like to just do more and be more and serve more? You feel like there's something in you that's just like screaming to get out there to go really step into yourself. If you guys feel like that, can 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 I can I can I get a yes down below? Can you guys drop a yes down below if that's if that's you? Because if that's you. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to my people. And as you guys are jumping on, if you guys are watching this for the very first time, if this is a <clears throat> live, drop a one down below. If you're watching on replay, just drop a two down below and I'd love to come and say hi later on. But okay, so we're on chapter three, part one. And here I'm going to tell you this story. The story begins, hello, Mr. Bill and Rhonda and everybody. Thank you. I, I did my hair myself today. <laughs> is a story. This jetliner takes off. And as soon as it starts taking off, it has this, you know, it's a full load. And as it's starting to take off, everything looks good until it comes over the ocean and all of a sudden it crashes. And as it's crashing down, everyone's in sheer panic and all of a sudden, you know, it hits the, it hits the ocean and everything's torn apart. And um, what takes place as the story goes is there, if somehow like people, for whatever reason, people are still alive on the plane, like they didn't die on impact, the plane just, the plane, uh, just gets disintegrated apart and there's people out there um, hanging on to stuff. And this one guy is there and he, as there's like this rescue helicopter or whatever, Okay, hold on, just read the chapter in the book and that will explain it better. But anyway, so a plane takes off, it crashes and then um, this guy is there and he gets thrown this life preserver. And what he does is he passes it on to the next person and then passes it on to the next person. And then he gets handed another one. He just keeps passing and passing and passing and passing and passing and giving the life preserver that could save his life to everybody else. True story. And what ended up happening is right around towards the very end where it was the, the last final life preservers, he goes to go hand it off and he loses consciousness and he goes below the ocean and he ends up dying. Second story, this guy named Ted Bundy has no issues with taking a hammer and smashing it into another human's head multiple times and, until he kills him. And he did this not one, but 10, 20, 30, I lose track of how many people that he killed for no reason, just because of sheer pleasure in it. So my question is, there's two distinct different stories, true stories. But what makes one person savagely destroy another human's life, feel the right, feel the juiciness to do, go do that, and makes another person give their life for somebody else they don't even know? Like, what makes that difference? And here's what I want to go ahead and explain, is what it is is the association between pain and pleasure. See, what the human experience is, is a human experience is just this dance, this mystical dance between us staying between pain and pleasure. Now, what does that mean? Listen closely. <laughs> Everything you do right now, Delana, hello, Mr. Carl and Larry and Carrie and Andrea and everybody. You guys just keep coming on. As you guys are coming on, by the way, I want you to say, hey, girl, hey, just say, hey. I want to say hey to you as you're coming on. Don't be sneaky. But what controls every single move you do, every single action, every single story in your head is the pain and pleasure dance. See, everything you do, you do it because you associate more pain in not doing it than doing it. And more pleasure in doing it than not doing it. Everything you don't do, you associate more pain in doing it than not doing it. That drives everything. A great example, as he talks about, is procrastination. Why do you procrastinate? <laughs> Are there any procrastinators? 
procrastinators in the house, drop, drop a P below if you guys are a procrastinator, or maybe not you, but you know somebody that's a procrastinator out there. Just curious. Rick, thank you. Carrie, thank you. Andrea, thank you. Destiny, thank you. Why do you procrastinate? Because you associate more pain in doing the thing and, uh, and, and more pleasure in not doing the thing right? And then eventually what happens is, is you procrastinate so long and all of a sudden you get it done really fast. And the reason why you can get yourself to do it in that moment is because you associate more pain and not doing it because the deadline's there. The boss is there. You could lose your job. You could get kicked out of school. And all of a sudden it's more painful not to do it than to do it. And that's why you get yourself to do it. Procrastination. Bam. Pain versus pleasure association. Uh, what, a, what, a, what about, I'm just curious. By the way, can anybody relate to that last that last example about procrastination. If that's you, hashtag me down below and let's just all admit, <laughs> myself included. Another, another great example of pain versus pleasure is have you ever really wanted to go approach this girl? Like you get attached so much pleasure because she's so amazing and so juicy and so everything you ever wanted, but yet you can't get yourself to go do it. Or maybe you're a girl and you want to go approach this guy. This guy's like your Superman, but he doesn't know you exist because you can't talk to him. So you really want to go do this because you associate so much pleasure, but the reason why you don't, why, why don't you? I'm just curious. Why don't you go and approach that girl or that guy? Why? <laughs> Can you guys all say pain down below? The pain is real. You project more pain in the concept of taking the action of talking to that individual um, and more pleasure in not. So more pleasure in staying over here in the safe zone and more pain in going out there and not risky, which is why you have yet to talk to that girl, have yet to talk to that guy exact example with starting a new business. Why haven't you done it? More pain, less pleasure or more pain <laughs> and pleasure in not doing it. Um, uh, getting your financial portfolio, you associate too much pain to it. Um, let's say what else? Um, getting physically in shape, like starting a diet. There's too much pain associated with it and not enough pleasure. And so the question is this, is long-term will working out make you feel good? Long-term will talking to that guy, girl, make you feel good? Long-term will starting that new business venture and having this massive success make you feel good and give you pleasure? Yes, yes, yes. But that doesn't control you. What controls you is what you actually feel in that moment. That is real. So even though you want to go lose the weight in the moment, that chocolate just looks so good. Just that good. Love that chocolate. How many of you guys are chocolate lovers? Can you can you drop? Can you can you can you push that love button, that heart button? If you guys are fellow chocolate lovers, I'm a recovering addict myself. <laughs> but do you get it? Are you following? Hashtag follow if you guys are following. Actually, what I want to go do is I want to create a code language between you and I. So I make sure Patty, I make sure Paula, I make sure Jim Lewis. Hello, Jim Lewis and Scott. Make sure that we're all on the same page. So if you are following, um, I'm gonna start saying. Drop a one down below if you're following, just make it simple. And if you're lost and you want me to slow down and explain it more, drop a question mark, <laughs> okay? Because this right here is not about you, Bill, you, Paulette, you, Patty, you, Jim, just sitting here listening to me. Nah, nah, nah. What it's about, it's about us learning together, asking questions together, and actually applying this stuff. Hence, you're going to have a homework assignment as soon as we're done with this. Who's excited about the homework assignment? Hit some thumbs up if you're excited about that. Okay. So what controls you is how you feel in that exact moment. It's heavy. So I want you to think about something in your life right now that you haven't been able to get yourself to go do and drop it down below. And let's get some real life examples going back and forth with something you really want to go do. Maybe something simple, <laughs> you know, like go call somebody, but you can't get yourself to do it. Go ahead and drop down what that example is. <laughs> Facebook Live, hurry up. You know what? If you guys just all came to my house and we could just collaborate together, we wouldn't have this delay on Facebook. <laughs> Who wants to come to my house, you guys? Who wants to come and hang out with me and Mr. Bentley? You guys are welcome to come. I'll just leave the door open. Okay, coming back to here. Okay, this right here is a great example that was explained in the book. <laughs> is, are you gonna, this is just to validate the whole entire principle, is are you gonna spend more time, Rhonda, more time, Scott, more time, Terry, more time, Cindy, more time, Kelly, more time, Aaron, more time, on making $100,000 or keeping somebody from stealing $100,000 from you? Are you gonna put, like, you wanna make 100,000, but if you had two instances 
Would you invest more time and energy and everything into keeping someone from stealing that hundred thousand dollars in your pocket or making a hundred thousand dollars? Which one? <laughs> Which one? The reason why is people will do more. Although they want the pleasure, they will do more to avoid pain than they will to gain pleasure. Both control you, but the pain is so real. And let me read this quote. The secret to success is learning how to use pain and pleasure instead of having pain and pleasure use you. That's heavy. Drop a heavy below if that was heavy for you. If you can learn how to do this, which I'm going to teach you. There's a lot of things I'm not good in my life, but one thing I've mastered that is mastering this pain and pleasure association. I'm, I'm good at that part. If you do this, you are in control of your life. But if you do not do this, life controls you. Period. And so the question is this. Good, good job, Connie. Good job, Cindy. Good job, Aaron. The question is this. Sherry, I've already felt pain in my life. Like, I'm already in pain. Like, I don't have enough money. Like, that's painful. Like, I don't have enough time. That's painful. Like, my relationship, it really sucks. Like, I, I, that's painful. All right? The, the fact that I'm overweight, like, that is painful. I'm unhealthy. I can't breathe. And you know what? <sighs> the reason why you're not changing yet, because even though you're experienced pain, the reason why you're not changing, if you've experienced pain and you're not changing, is because you have not hit your emotional threshold yet. Your emotional threshold of where there's too much pain. So you're not in enough pain yet. It's that theory about the dog. Have any of you guys heard about the dog? Yes, drop a two down below if you've heard about the dog sitting on the porch on a nail. I'll fill you in if you haven't heard the story. This dog is on the porch. And, sorry, this dog is on the porch. And it's like wailing, like, or whatever a dog sounds like. <laughs> um, and so somebody comes up to him and is like, dog, why are you wailing? Like, what's your problem? And he's like, well, I'm sitting on a nail. And so the guy's like, okay, we'll just get off the nail. And he was like, well, it's not painful enough yet. Boom! Can you hashtag boom down below? It's like, hello. So what happens is if you experience pain, but you have not uh, been able to get yourself to change long term, it's because you haven't hit your emotional threshold yet. You haven't experienced enough pain yet. But if you haven't hit that level, I guarantee you it's coming. So you can either be the, be the dictator of that, of that change, when that change is going to happen, or the change is going to happen upon you. It will get painful enough at some point. You just might use, it might just come at the expense of your entire life. Oh, that just made me sick to my stomach. Oh. All right, let's keep going. And that, my friends, what I'm going to do is how to make pain your best friend. See, pain and pleasure, pain is my best friend. If you know how to use it correctly, if you use pain to go drive you, <laughs> it, 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 if you associate enough pain to a certain behavior, it's done. Like you'll never go back to that behavior. And this right here validates it. What we link pain and pleasure to shapes our entire destiny. Everything. Even the example he uses with the orchestra. How many of you guys have been? Good job, Terry. How many of you guys have been in the airport? And all of a sudden you hear this beautiful music and it's the most amazing music you've ever heard in your entire life coming from this orchestra, just playing along. And so you want to stop and listen so badly because it feels so good. But what do you do instead? I'm actually curious if you were to stop and listen to the music, drop a one down below. But if you would like not stop and keep walking, drop a two down below. I just want to kind of see what our, let's do a little friendly poll on here with our community. <sighs> what most people do or if somebody does this, they ignore the orchestra. They stop for just a second and takes off running. And why do they do that? Because even though the orchestra is pleasurable, they associate more pain in missing their flight. <laughs> so they take off running, right? There's more pain associated in the thing. Exact same thing as, you know, how many of you guys have been driving to work or driving to some sort of appointment? And all of a sudden you look out and it's like this beautiful filter, this beautiful ocean if you live in California. Anybody been to the PCH, by the way? That's like breathtaking. But you've been out there and all you want to do is just like go play and go run or go ride horses or go walk your dog or go exercise or go just like lay in the grass and think of nothing. <laughs> but what do you do instead? You keep driving. Because although you associate pleasure, in the moment you associate more pain to being late, more pain in getting fired, more pain to getting home five minutes late and having to deal with all the different dramas, like more pain. How many of you guys are following right now? Drop a one if you are following. That's our key code, drop a one. Drop a question mark if you are really confused right now. But what I think I want you to understand is everything you do right now, you associate, you do it because you associate more pain than pleasure, period, in that moment, not long-term, in that moment. So let's bring it back. <sighs> 
By the way, have any of you guys thought about stories and how this relates to you in your life? I'm just curious if you thought about it. Good job, all you, all you brilliant. You guys are so brilliant. Look at all those ones. Look at all those follows. Okay. So here's a story. Just to kind of bring it back to applicableness. I just made that word up. Applicable. <laughs> just to make it more applicable. There you go. I did it. <laughs> Good job, Sherry. <laughs> is this. I remember one time in my life. Uh, I don't know exactly how old they were. I was probably in my early 20s. And... Um, I was going to meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting because I had already started into the field of entrepreneurship, you know, making my own destiny. The problem was is my nutrition was not the best. So I would eat three times a day uh, from Wendy's, a kid's meal, cheeseburger, ketchup only, a large Diet Coke. Second meal a day, kid's meal, cheeseburger, ketchup only, large Diet Coke. Third meal a day, kids milk, cheeseburger, ketchup only, large diet coke. Can you guys just throw the little, the little, the little sick emoji down below? <laughs> Everybody told me it was bad for me. I can't tell you how many reports. Some of my good friends, closest friends, uh, Cindy B, uh, Katrina, all these guys. I guarantee you, Van was thinking about it. Sent me this information about how poisonous diet coke was. But I didn't care. Like, I knew it was bad and it was painful, but it wasn't painful enough. So I just kept on eating this stuff and eating this stuff. And I could feel my energy drop. I could feel, like, my bones hurt. I could feel all this stuff. My face was breaking out. I could feel all this pain. But I kept doing it. Like, I wanted to stop. And I always told myself I was going to stop. And I was going to stop next week and the next day and the next week and the next week. But I never could get myself to stop. Have you guys ever wanted to stop something so bad? But you just couldn't get yourself to stop. Why? Because you haven't hit your emotional threshold yet. And if you don't intentionally set it up, it will be set up for you. And it will be in a very inconvenient time. Like for mine, one day I finally got home from all my meetings and I just crashed. My whole entire body just collapsed. Every bone in my body, every cell in my body, every drop of blood in my body just felt like fatigue and just felt like poison and just felt like disease. My face was just breaking out. My head felt like it was going to explode. Like if you would have given me a, a hand chopper... <laughs> I would have cut my head off. Like I was in that much pain. I literally felt like I was dying. Like that quote I said, whenever I speak really passionate about you are using your teeth to dig your own grave. That was Sherry Holland back. <laughs> and it was in that moment, I finally hit my emotional threshold. And I said, no, not another minute, not another second. Not, no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I will never for a second, for a second ever put that stupid cheeseburger, only ketchup, large Diet Coke in my body again, let alone any other fast food, let alone another drop of Diet Coke. So I used to drink in one meal, when I would go to restaurants, I would drink seven to eight to nine glasses of Diet Coke. I'm just, I'm just curious, are any of you guys recovering Diet Cokes or Red Bull or Rockstars or, or any of those toxic acid? Or have any of you guys done that before? Drop a five down below if you have that slight addiction problem like I did. Mine was bad. I would drink my weight in soda every single day. <laughs> also, on night shift when I worked at the sheriff's office, I would drink like a 12 pack of, of Diet Mountain Dew and also like a 12 pack of the Rock Stars, uh, whatever. Like, just give the meal energy drink, just like, just load me up in these synthetics energy until the day I finally hit my emotional threshold. And thank goodness, thank goodness, it was when it was. And there wasn't more damage done. And so that moment I hit my emotional threshold. Bam. All of a sudden I, I did this neural association and linked so much pain to that past behavior of fast food and just diet Coke and all that nasty eating. So much pain to it. I never again. I promise. That's not a sign for promise. I don't know what that is. But I promise with my pinky. I've never once since then. Fast food. No. Diet Coke, no, it was done in that moment because I had linked so much emotional pain to that situation, to that behavior. So it was just done. Like it was set up for me. I didn't have to like try to not do it. There's so much pain and nastiness there. I just didn't do it by default. So here's one thing I want you to understand is if we link any behavior or emotional pattern, if we link any behavior or emotional pattern um, to like intense amount of negativity, or, or, or bad feelings or pain, we will avoid indulging in it at all costs. And we can use this understanding to harness the force of pain and pleasure and change virtually everything and anything we want in our life. And it's not gonna take you six years of therapy, it can happen in one moment. <laughs> you might have thought it took me 
20 something years to finally change. Nah, it took me a second. Like the second my head was gonna explode, the second my face was breaking, the second I thought I was dying, that's when I made the change. It happened in a second. Change does not take decades, change happens in a second. So here's this. Any pain that's holding us, oh, any pain that's holding us uh, back from doing something or taking action, the pain I want you to understand uh, is not real. It's the pain we believe is going to be holding us back. So it's not actually an actual measurement. So if you do, if you do X, you go talk to that guy or you go, you know, go start working out or you go start, um, do the project you're supposed to go, supposed to go do the pain you make up in your head is always going to be an inaccurate measurement because what happens is we think about a situation like leaving a relationship that has been toxic an abusive, physically abusive relationship that has been toxic. The reason why those people stay in it, I used to not understand it until I understood this concept. The reason why people allow themselves to stay in that type of situation is because they, easy, they associate more pain in the thought of leaving. Like they're living in pain, but they associate more pain in the thought of leaving because the measurement is inaccurate. Our human brain will always increase the amount of pain that's actually there. It's fake pain. It's just perceived pain. And so what's beautiful is we can change that measurement at any second. We can manipulate it to be a little bit of pain and lots of pain staying. A little bitty pain, lots of pleasure leaving. A little bitty pain, lots of pleasure leaving or a lot of pain not leaving and a little bit of pleasure staying. Does that make sense? Are you guys following? Drop a one below if you're following. I'm just curious, Corey. I'm just curious, Connie, Terry, Bill. How are you guys? Followed? Brian, all of you guys on here. Just drop a one down below if you guys are following. We're bringing it home here. So the question is this. Actually, it's more of a statement. If we don't direct, oh my gosh, if we do not direct the dance of this pain and pleasure, if we don't direct it, we're just like animals. Like we're living at that same annual animal instinct because we're just like the dogs, like pleasure, pain, pleasure, pain. We're not even thinking. We're just going, okay, this feels bad. We're not going to do it. This feels good. We're going to do it. Pleasure, pain. We're just an animal. Like if you're living at that level, <laughs> period. That might be a little bit harsh, but that's, that's accurate. And, um, the question is, how do you fix it? Well, I've already explained it. <laughs> I've already explained it. So this is going to answer your question. We had a beautiful question by Irene. Thank you, Irene. If you're on here, say I'm on here. Can you guys just drop a hashtag? Thank you, Irene. Because her question was, how do you bust through fear? Well, why is she scared? Because whatever action she wants to go take, what is she doing? She's associating more pain and taking the action more pleasure in not doing the action, more intense pain in taking action than sitting there and not taking the action. So there's more intense pain with starting the business than having life being stagnant. There's more intense pain with working out or eating healthy than there is in the arthritis or the overweight or lack of breath. Although there's pain, there's more pain in doing the thing. Thank you, Irene. Thank you, Irene. So that's how you break through fears right here. What I'm about to tell you is you just change the linkage. You associate more pain in the bad behavior and more pleasure in the good behavior. That's it. But whenever you do that association, you got to link intense pain. Whenever I say intense pain, I mean you got to link pain to your bad behavior. You got to take pain from the past, bring it here. Take pain uh, to the present. What is this behavior costing you in the past? What has it cost you emotionally and financially, relationships and your health and yourself? What has it cost you in the past? What's it currently costing you right now by not being able to get yourself to go do the thing? What's it currently costing you? And your emotional, and your emotions, your relationship, your financials, your, your, like, what is it costing you? What type of example are, are you setting for your kids and for your family, for society? Like what, what, what type of pain are you currently living in? And then what type of pain can you attach in the future? So if you don't course correct right now, listen closely here, but like this whole entire live is, this is where the juice is at. You guys want to get juicy? <laughs> just sit, just sit, just sit. You have to associate so much intense pain to the future. If you do not take action, Whatever you want to take action on, you're not taking action. It's just because you have linkage to taking pain to taking action. So you got to link so much pain to not taking action. So if you don't take action in the future, what's it going to cost you in the future? You let this control you for another 10 years. You let this control you for another 20 years. What's it going to cost you emotionally, financially, relationships? What are you going to tell yourself in the mirror? You know, you wasted another decade of your life. And you attach so much pain to the bad behavior. Bam! It will be gone if you link enough pain. Period. And then once you link enough pain, I've done this, to, I've done this literally to date to thousands of people, thousands, one-on-one -on -one or in groups of 5,000 people on stage. Like this stuff 
works. How many of you guys have done this to you, by the way? How many of you guys have to have experiences where I've actually to walked you through this process? Drop a, drop a seven down below if I've walked you through this process personally. I'm just curious. Uh, but once you do that linkage, you got to constantly condition it. And I'm going to walk you through that. But here's this. Here's one thing I want to close with just to kind of level up your awareness is advertisers today, they're doing this. See, if you don't consciously direct yourself, the outside world is going to be directing you because there's a lot of people that know about this that spend big money on ads and they're using you. <laughs> like this isn't a like conspiracy theory is true. And what they do is they will sit there watching an advertisement. They will sit there and play a music, like play a song and put you in this like state where you just feel so good or um, they'll play a song or they'll play a picture or play a movie or play something really enjoyable like a couple in the honeymoon in Paris or you know sexy girls dancing all over a guy you have know, for a guy commercial or just in the spa but anyway they play something super enjoyable and also they'll flash their product so like you feel good see the product feel good see their product feel good see their product and what they're doing is they're creating a neural association making you link up pleasure to their product the product has nothing to do with that song. The, the product has nothing to do with sexy girls. The product has nothing to do with the spa. The product has nothing to do with you going off into a random vacation with your spouse. Like nothing. But they, they just play the music and get you in state and then they flash their product. They build this pleasure connected to you. And if they're really good, they'll build pain into it. But a great example of this um, that's explained in the book is Michael Jackson. Pepsi did this brilliant thing. Michael Jackson, which how many of you guys are Michael Jackson fans? Can you drop a heck yeah below if you guys like the Michael Jackson fans? I'm just curious. Michael Jackson. What, they, what Pepsi company did was they paid him $15 million to allow... Uh, <clears throat> him to allow uh, allow to use him for their advertisements and michael jackson was so funny is he refused to drink pepsi he refused to even touch the can so they hired this guy that hated pepsi <laughs> to represent their pepsi and how did they do it super simple what they did was they played they played um his songs with him dancing in it and people just got into this state because they liked how he moved with his body and they liked his voice and they got all this pleasure attached to michael jackson so they're like michael jackson michael jackson oh it feels so good all these memories all this inducing all this juiciness oh my gosh i love so much and all of a sudden they would flash pepsi do you get it so what they were doing was they were intensely intentionally getting all your pleasures up and then all of a sudden flashing their product bam that right there is a neuro association linkage Right there, the, the, the sales of Pepsi like increased like 600%. Don't quote me on that, but like 600%. <laughs> the dude was paid $15 million and he wouldn't even touch Pepsi, but they had like a 600% increase in their sales just because people did this neural association. They linked pleasure to Pepsi. 600% up. Like it's, it's crazy. The cool thing is you can do this intentionally on yourself. So here's going to be the homework assignment. Homework assignment is this. So I want you guys, number one is I want you, by the way, who would like a homework assignment? Would you guys like a homework assignment? Would you like a homework? Drop an eight if you would like a homework assignment, just so I can know who to give the homework assignment to. <laughs> Number one, what I want you to go ahead and do is I want you to think of something in your life right now that you can't get yourself to do. You've really been wanting to go make 10 phone calls a day, but you can't get yourself to go do it. You really wanted to go start <clears throat> cleaning out the closet, but you can't get yourself to go do it. You really wanted to go start working out, but you can't get yourself to do it. You really wanted to go leave that relationship, but you can't get yourself to go do it. You really wanted to lean in and give everything to that relationship, but you can't get yourself to go do it. You really want to, whatever you want to go do, but you can't get yourself to go do the thing. Write down that event and actually drop it down below if you don't mind sharing so we can all learn together. And is this a safe spot? Is this a safe spot? Can you guys do hashtag safe if this is a safe spot to where we can all collaborate together and just be honest and learn from each other? Is that okay? Hashtag safe down below. <sighs> because I want you to understand every single one of you guys on this call had so much tremendous value. And a lot of these principles we're going to be learning and we've already learned. You guys have experience in your life just you didn't realize what you were doing. You guys are all brilliant, absolutely brilliant. The fact you're on here at night <laughs> after a long day, you're like, I want more. I want to increase my growth, increase my happiness, increase everything. You guys are the most beautiful, incredible human beings. I'd rather spend no other place than right here with you. So is this a safe spot here? Okay. So drop down the event in your life you can't get yourself to go do. Now what I want you to do for step number two is I want you to go ahead and think about whenever you want to go take action, what pain do you associate with taking action? What pain? 
Is it the pain of rejection? Is it pain of losing your friends? Is it the pain of, um, you know, losing credibility? Is it the pain of physical harm? Is it the pain of what? What is this? What is this intense pain that the brain has mismeasured and made it huge? What is the pain you associate with it? The pain of not giving. Um, not giving up your wine, the pain of not being able to have your me time, the pain of not being able to go take a nap. What is the pain? I don't know. And then I want you to go ahead and recognize what is the pleasure you're indulging in by not taking action. Now, this is where it gets deep. Good job, Connie. Good job, Cindy. Good job, Tiny. Terry. Good Scott. Good job. What is the pain? associated Like that thing you can't get yourself to go do. What is the pain associated with the event. If you go take action, what's the pain you think is going to happen? Step number two, what is the pleasure you're currently indulging in? Whenever you go to go make phone calls, but you decide not to do it, what do you do instead? Do you clean your desk? Do you go take a nap? Do you go walk around and stress out? Do you make another names list? Do you, whenever you want to go talk to that girl, but you can't do it. So you do something else. What do you go do instead? Stick your hand in your pockets, walk around super nervous. That's not pleasurable, Sherry. But yes, it is. You associate more pleasure in that moment to doing that thing and more pain in doing the thing you have, can't get yourself to do. So even though it's not ultra pleasurable, it's more pleasurable like staying in your safe zone. It's more pleasurable not getting rejected. It's more pleasurable to go clean your desk and, and feel certain about something because you're really good at cleaning your desk, but you don't know if you're gonna be good at making phone calls, but you're really good at cleaning your desk, but you, you don't know if you're gonna be good at, at you know making money, but you're really good at walking around nervous in the circle because you've done it so many times, but you don't know if you're gonna be good at being able to talk to that girl. Or you're really good you know, at, you want to feel that certainty that food gives you every single time that chocolate just bam makes you feel so certain. And so you'd rather have that certainty, um, of knowing the expected feeling than the, and, and, and there's uncertainty in actually taking action in working out. Cause you don't know how good you're going to be at that. You don't know how long your body's going to hold up. you like, you just don't, this is painful over there, right? Okay. So what is the pleasure you associate and not taking action? What's the pain you associate with taking action? <sighs> And that right there is a the homework for tonight. So if you can just level up your awareness for just a moment. And by the way, I honor every single one of you guys that have gotten on. If you guys have stayed on through this whole entire program, drop a hashtag, I'm number one. That's you. Drop a hashtag, I'm number one. Because I just want you guys to recognize that there's so many people that say they want to change. They say they want to grow. They say they want to go do something. But yet they can't spend 15 minutes and learning how to go do it. They say they want to go, they want to get all these new results, but they can't, like, they, like, they can't even sit here and watch this long term. Like, can you guys drop down a hashtag? I'm number one. If you guys have hung on to here the whole entire time, I'm just so proud of you, number one. Number one, hashtag number one. I'm hanging out with number ones right now. But that's your homework tonight. And if you want to have extra bonus, just go ahead and do it on multiple different things in your life. You can't get yourself to go do something. Write down what's a pain and what's a pleasure. What's a pain and what's a pleasure. And I will give you step uh, part two of the homework tomorrow. On now that we've identified it, okay, how do we make this shift? Because if you can learn how to make the shift, you can make a change in an instant. I've done this over and over and over and over, not just with myself, but with thousands of other people to date. Period. So with that said, can you guys do me a favor? Can you guys do me a favor? Can you number one, drop a hashtag value if you guys got value out of this. If you guys have any questions, private message me because we've been getting so many comments on here because you guys are just such a juicy involvement crowd that I haven't been able to go through and answer all the questions. So if you have a question, just message me then, pro um, you know, through my inbox or whatever <laughs> and I'll make sure I answer them on here. But, but drop a hashtag value if you guys got value out of this. If you guys have any questions, just personally message me and tomorrow we're going to be doing good job love the hearts. Thank you so much. And tomorrow we're going to be going over chapter three, but part two, and I'm going to finish the homework. Now you've become aware of this, like what to do next, how to change the linkage. Cause if you can learn how to change the linkage, your whole entire life can be shifted in a second. Have an amazing night tonight. Bye everybody. <laughs>